that. Steve, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, Maria. Great good, morning. good morning, Steve. Good, good to see you. Here. I, yes. Around that same time, I read another book because my neighbor gave me both books, and it was called Into Thin Air, and it was the story of a Mount Everest expedition. They eventually made a movie out of it. Did read that too. But it was just another amazing book. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Read those back to back. It spoiled future books for me because it set the bar really high. It was tough to beat. And then you two. wanted to go off and do an, a, you know, Antarctic no. adventure. That, well, no, that, that, that was Everest. That was Everest. Yeah. <laughs> was Everest. And uh, actually, the guy that wrote that book had I did not work with him, but he had been a he was a in the organization that I was in. So okay. I yeah, about the same time wow. I was. So. I did not. I think I remember you actually telling me that before, too. But that book was just torture to read because yeah. of the. I mean, you're a twenty. 7,000 feet on Mount Everest and a storm comes in that comes in every... I mean, as bad as it is up that elevation anyway, they get one of those insane storms and then all hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. right, they made a movie out of it too. It's all, it's all true. And they were lucky to get back. That was they one were, of those yeah. cases that great probability they should have been killed yeah and they some the ones that made it back they, they had some serious scars from it too they did yeah mm -hmm. uh steve good morning to you thanks so much for coming in man sure so tell me good about period. this uh, this fit for you as a, a newly elected county council uh, i am officer. enjoying it very much yeah and um a lot to learn as bill would attest um i want to say this uh the three commissioners that were already in office uh jim and jim and I, i've got to start calling them jb and jw because when i they sit both of them next to each other. When I say Jim, they both respond to me. So, and then Eddie, of course, have and and then the administrative staff at the county has been overwhelmingly kind to me, and been out, going out of their way to make me feel welcome. And I'm very annoying because I ask a lot of questions and I'm trying to learn. And they have not they have not kicked me out yet, or they've tolerated me very well. So I, I really appreciate that. It means a lot. And I think I can't speak for HD, but I think he feels the same way. I would think so. Very good. And Alan Davis, of course, we understand will be retiring. This that year. is correct. And uh, I know it was a difficult decision for him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been in government work for over 40 years. And um, and basically, I went through that a few years ago. And so I said, you have to do what's best for Alan, you know. Sure. And so um, it, uh, he, he's going to be a big loss. But at the same time, uh, Bobby Burkhart told me one time many years ago, he came out to the poorhouse farm and he said, Steve, you're doing a good job, but you can always be replaced. I want you to remember that. And I've never <laughs> forgotten that. The same conversation with Mike Hornby. Yeah. <laughs> and he told me that, and I've never forgotten that. And uh, and he's exactly right, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, he, he does a good job. He works very hard, and um, and uh, the county uh, council has depended on him heavily. But uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned several names. The name that you have not mentioned is the most important one of all, and that's Penny Sewell. Oh, Penny's if, great. If you if you get on the wrong side of Penny, no, you might I, as well close the door. You're I, gone. I annoy her probably more than anybody up there, Bill. <laughs> no, and, uh, she, but she, she's been very kind she, to me. No, she's a jewel. And she runs I, Actually, she I went runs. to her. She is the boss. Two days ago, I went to her, and I was having trouble with my new uh, 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 iPad. Mm. We had to call Gary in there, yeah. so it wasn't just me. And Penny couldn't figure it out either, so we called Gary in to uh, resolve the problem. But, but Gary uh, figured it out. He did. We understand Gary will ultimately succeed Alan well, Davis. Is I that official? That or? has not been discussed yet by the full council. Okay. Uh, obviously, that's you know a lot of people's thinking, but mm -hmm. uh, we still have to decide whether we're going to advertise for the position. Uh, Gary, certainly, if we do, can apply. Uh, I don't know legally if uh, you can promote somebody with him without advertising. I'm not sure. We need to find that out. Mm -hmm. But at this point, we have not discussed. Uh, that, that should be discussions coming very soon. So I'm going to throw my two cents in when it's not asked, regardless. <laughs> uh, I think you should advertise, yeah. but I cannot imagine finding anyone close to being as qualified right. for Gary Wine right. is. So. I understand that. Yeah, yeah so. I appreciate that. Now, I don't, I don't usually offer this opportunity, but this opportunity doesn't often present itself. <laughs> so in this particular case, Steve, I have you know with me a former president of the mm -hmm. Berkeley County Commission and you as a newly elected councilman slash mm -hmm. commissioner. If there's any questions you have for Bill about the job, go right ahead and ask right now because I think we'd all like to learn. Yeah, well, pro pro so can we can we extend this program for another four and a half hours? Yeah. I see no problem yeah. with that, Bill. <laughs> Just bring in the coffee and the donuts. And then, and then we'll get to the second question. And, <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> I've already talked to Bill often, uh, and I told him when I got elected yeah. that I'm going to depend on him yeah. as one of no. uh, the people that I would like to call on, and he is uh, – more than welcome to speak with me at any time about things and i appreciate and respect his uh 
opinion very much. So, But I made a promise to myself and to the council member at the time that I would never volunteer advice. Things change once you leave office. You're no longer current. You do not know the nuances of a job. If somebody wants to come and ask me, fine, but I'm never going to volunteer. So That's mighty gracious of you, William. Yeah. Well, it's, there's a lot of truth to it because it's uh, uh, one of the beauties of our democracy is that we have turnover of leadership. And everybody that comes in has good ideas uh, may not be uh, uh, as, as proven an idea as what the incumbent has, but they have new ideas, they have good ideas, and they should be have an opportunity to, to utilize these new ideas. Maria. So Steve, what are some of your new big ideas? Well, um, first of all, I understand two responsibilities, and that is uh, we need to properly fund the departments of the other elected officials, obviously, and that's very important. So they can do their job efficiently. Here, here. <laughs> and, and then, secondly, I think our biggest concern is public safety. And I spent the weekend drafting a uh, email to the state delegates and senators, and I sent it out Monday uh, about addressing the infrastructure. And I, I did it from an angle of public safety. And it, it goes with roads, it goes with law enforcement, it goes with fire and rescue, it goes with the health department, and it's just uh, a, a def I ran on a platform that the infrastructure needs to catch up with our growth. And certainly, uh, we depend heavily on Charleston to help us. Uh, we've been asking for the 1% sales tax for a number of years. Uh, I doubt if that's going to happen this year with uh, what's going on there. I hope at the very least the biggest thing that could best thing that could happen to us is John Hardy's uh, attempt to try to get the property transfer money back to us. We're in the second year, so we're getting 20 percent of the share the state was keeping. In terms of revenue, you're talking before the interest rates went high, the state was keeping two million dollars a year from that tax source, so it's very significant, and we're getting 400 thousand of that back. It's going to reduce at the county level. We're now getting three million dollars from that source. And it's going to get reduced. So if we get it all back now, it'll help offset the reduction during this uh, infrastructure, uh, the interest rate hike, until it recovers. And then also, the intent of his bill years ago was to try to get money back so we could use it for quality of life issues. Uh, I think first we may have to use it to build our infrastructure and public safety issues first, you know, and then if we get that under control, then then maybe start using it down the road for uh you know uh for quality of life issues as well so but it's it's a big challenge um the other thing we got to learn how to do uh maria and bill and, and rob is to to live without COVID funds uh the uh arpa money uh we've you know the every community's been funded heavily with that and have used it for a lot of things uh, but the, there's no more coming and uh we're going to have to get used to living without that so uh, we've got to uh I think the next fiscal year is going to be, uh, we're going to be very sound fiscally. Uh, but I think the year after that, if the interest rate stays high, uh, I think we're going to struggle a little bit and the, the funding is going to decrease some. And uh, so we have to be concerned about that and prepare Steve, for that. Steve, can you explain the relationship of high interest rates to the county council's finances? Well, just obviously uh, people buying and building homes and putting additions on their houses and whatever, you know, it's borrowing money for down. any reason, it, it slows, slows the economy down, down yeah. sure. And so that's obviously going to have an impact. You already see it now in the reports that we get every week uh, from the different departments. You know, uh, you know, less less people applying for this and that. So uh, it's it's going to have an effect. There's no question about that. So. You mentioned infrastructure, Steve, mm -hmm. uh, and we do have demands on all facets of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. To me, though, the water and water availability is probably the number one. I agree. Uh, but to some degree, it is channeling the growth along where we have distribution. If we had this expansive growth spread evenly throughout the county, uh, would be and would be hard put to uh, uh, to satisfy to match the growth. But as long as it stays right. in the distribution of the water, right. it, the growth can be managed but even now bill we're, we're filtering about a six million gallons a day mm -hmm. png uses a million gallons a day mm. themselves yeah if another png tries to come in here i'm not so sure we're prepared to supply that water to them right now they have over as you well know a hundred million dollars worth of needs yeah uh, obviously they're probably going to have to borrow money and they're going to have to raise the rates soon 
In fact, they are meeting with Public Service Commission today right. uh, to address these various things. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but they've got to take care of it. Water is critical, obviously, to our survival. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the roads is another issue, obviously. We all hate the traffic. We all get delays. But I attended, I asked to be on the MPO, okay, one of the committees I represent for the county, and that is the Hagerstown Eastern Panhandle Metropolitan Planning Organization. Well, there can be one road improvement made in Berkeley, Jefferson, and Hagerstown, Washington County, unless it's approved by this uh, authority, or board, whatever. And I attended my first meeting last week at the airport, and I was disheartened because at the end of the meeting, and there was a representative there, a planner there from the West Virginia DOT, and I said, is there any uh, plans to pursue the, um, the thing off Short Road to Novak Road to get traffic off Exit 12? And the response was, it's been killed. There's no plans to do that. I said, okay, I've heard about that for years. I said, for 40 years, I live west of Hedgesville. There's been talk about the bypass from Martinsburg to Berkeley Springs. There are no plans to pursue that whatsoever in any phase. There's six different alternates that were part of that plan. And that was disheartening to me. I, I, I said to the GI from the state, I said, we're the fastest growing county in, in the state, and there's no major road improvement plans for Berkeley County. And I was stunned. And I said to them, even if we can't do a major project, could we get more money to improve the existing roads that we have? Because as we continue to grow, we're going to have more delays and people can get frustrated. But what's also going to happen, we're going to have more accidents and we're going to have the potential for more fatalities. And the road that I live on, there's been many fatalities. I think it's either the first or second in the state of West Virginia in terms of, of, of dangerous highways is Route 9 West going to Berkeley Springs. And uh, so after the meeting, Matt Mullinex is the director. And I said, Matt, I said, I can't believe what I heard just now. And I said, we have no direct contact here in Berkeley County or no input on the uh, Department of, of Transportation. And could you set up a meeting with somebody? And the guy that was there said that he didn't have the clout. I said, well, we need somebody with clout to come to Berkeley County or we'll go to Charleston and meet with those folks. So we have some input on what the decision making is. You know, they're putting lights on Interstate 81. Now, is that a safety thing or not? But it's tens of millions of dollars. And to me, it would be better served if we put it in our roads. And, and I think that's we, been kind yeah. of the argument yeah. is yeah. all the improvements to 81. Um, yeah. That, look, we have three lanes right. going all the way up, coming back. I, I mean, so... Sorry, Bill. Yeah, uh, we uh, uh, we had the same issue in Inwood a few years ago, uh, and I I made the play on safety, mm -hmm. and I used the argument uh, response of the EMS, mm -hmm. and we had the standard number is they need to be out of the door ready to go in something like six to seven minutes. Mm -hmm. In Inwood at the time, it was closer to twenty minutes out of the door. Mm -hmm. We brought mm -hmm. the uh, the Secretary of Transportation up. We had an all day meeting with all the EMS with all the fire and um, and the other parties and and it worked mm -hmm. it, because you've seen all mm -hmm. the effort all the work's gone in the inwood in the last four or five years yeah. it's not done overnight but it was the fact that we were we were able to demonstrate the importance based strictly on safety the squeaky wheel gets greased yeah, that's right. and we've got a squeak and we've got a holler and we've got to scream for help okay with our state legislators with our dot all of them and we need help desperate i appreciate the subblefield institute's yeah. forum last week thank a you a week ago yeah. at musselman high school it was well attended eddie did a good job representing he the did. county council and you know look how the interest that was there because and it's all about the growth and the infrastructure that can't keep up to our growth yeah. and it's our number one problem uh we need 24 new firefighters. We have 24 7 coverage on paid firefighters at Baker Heights only, and there's four other fire companies that are requesting it, and it takes six per four, 24 new people. That's a cost of $1.8 million. But look where we are compared to all the other counties. I know that. We are much, much better shape than yeah, any other counties. But county. they're not growing like we are. You're exactly right. I and, agree with that. I agree. Yeah. But they're going, let's go back to the, the Hedgesville uh, road, the uh, mm -hmm. road going to uh, Morgan County. I was surprised and somewhat disappointed uh, during the last uh, uh, election cycle where we had the delegates appearing before us. Mm -hmm. And that question was asked to two or three. Mm -hmm. One of the delegates 
had no concept at all of what the road situation was in Hedgesville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another delegate, uh, a delegate candidate, uh, knew the there were several alternatives, but but the impression I had is there is no concrete thinking, no concrete mm-hmm. planning. Mm-hmm. And you're right. This has been talked about for several years, right. and it's been within a critical stage for several years. If Nine we up. have number on one number need, that number one need, that is it. You get to the square of Hedgesville, you turn left if you're traveling east yeah. on 901. Well, the rooftop's down on 901 now. You'd be amazed at how much development's there and more traffic. I followed a tractor and trailer on that road a few weeks ago. He slammed on his brakes three times. Another car coming towards him slamming the brakes so he wouldn't hit him. He cannot make those curves unless he uses both lanes to do it. On one particular curve, he had to actually stop his tractor and trailer and back up in the middle of the highway yeah, yeah. to make the turn. And it's just, it's unbelievable. And, and yet uh, the person from the Department of Transportation who has no clout right. said that there's not even a plan. I mean, right. this and is uh, the first time I thought now, that... Well, the, the person that attends these meetings that Steve's talking about, they are basically messengers. Okay. They are not in the senior decision making. But he mentioned Matt Molinex. Matt is probably one of the most effective person that we have as far as preparing the material that can be presented in a logical manner to the decision maker in Charleston. Well, let me ask the obvious question here. With uh, Berkeley County politicians currently in leadership positions in Charleston, Craig Blair is the Senate President, Eric Householder is the House Majority Leader, and John Hardy is the Vice Chair of Finance. Mm Mm-hmm. So you've got leadership and you've got money covered there. Obviously, they can't do anything that they want, but we're far past the time we can complain that we don't have enough representation in Charleston to get things done. What's the sticking point here, Steve? Uh, You tell me, Rob, uh, but we've got to have attention and we've got to get help. We really do. It took the town of Hedgesville over a year or two years to get the left turn light going left if you're traveling east on 901 to be installed you know and Craig stepped in and finally pushed that and I tell you what I travel that road every day and it helped immensely you used to get stopped down where the post office is Mm -hmm. and it would take you over 10 minutes to get through the stoplight now it takes three to five minutes okay it helped it tremendously Uh, they're actually considering a left turn lane there which the town of Hedgesville is opposed to but the stoplight has worked really well. Mm-hmm. So if it takes a year and a half to get a stoplight uh, left turn signal, Goodness. how long is it going to take to get a real road built? Uh, hey, yeah, but I, that's, I, that's, I, I want to get to something sorry, before yeah. we run. We only have about five minutes okay. left. Bob Williams was in yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you ran Parks and Rec in this mm-hmm. community for 40 years. Bob's mm-hmm. doing it now. Seems to be doing a pretty good job. He yes. put uh, together, uh, along with a lot of help, I presume, the comprehensive plan for the future and the mm-hmm. growth of Parks and Rec. Mm-hmm. Uh, I imagine you've had a chance to look at this uh, because of your interest in Parks and Rec, Steve. What's the future with this comprehensive plan look like? Well, it it does. There's some aspects of it I don't agree with, but there's some that are great. Uh, Obviously, we need more land. We've got the 70 acres next to the poorhouse now, which is wonderful. But we need bigger tracks in north and south Berkeley, and we need to do something out in the Hedgesville and Back Creek areas. So I talked to Bob for 40 minutes yesterday about some projects and stuff that are hopefully we can get started. And, I, I, you know, obviously they got a, a fan and support at the county council to pursue public recreation and quality of life now for sure. And know? who's that, Steve? Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's HD. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, yes, uh, there's a great a lot of needs. But our first concern, and I know this, is a broad perspective as being on the council now. It's different sitting on the other side of the podium than it was <laughs> when I was on the other side. Yeah. And I finally <laughs> learned after all these years why I didn't get the money I asked for because I never brought them any food. So Maria's there last week in front of the budget thing for hospice, and she brings cookies. And I said, Maria, you're late because Amy Orndorff was there before that and brought us a nice piece of cake. So I, said, <laughs> I know. I And it's, it's always a bad thing when you follow Amy anywhere. Yeah. But I learned my lesson. Because, yeah. like, the first year, I don't bring anything. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, well, and I'm, I'm always around lunchtime. So I know no, that smart. it's pretty smart. Yeah. yeah. I learned mine too late, too late, way too late. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And I know how old I am because her son comes to our meeting almost every week. Yeah. And I remember him when he was in our soccer program and yeah. our basketball program growing up. Well, and now he's a lawyer representing us at the county level. Let me so ask you a fundamental. Will, Will makes me feel old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, me too. Him is all of us. Yeah. A fundamental funding question. Uh, Bob said user fees uh, account for 60-something percent of the budget right now. Mm-hmm. I think at times with you is even higher than that pre-COVID. always averaged around 70 percent. Right. right. So uh, you obviously understand parks and rec issues better than anybody else who's ever been elected to the county uh, Well, I would council. hope so. After 45 years, yeah. I'm not real smart, but I think I had learned a little bit. Better. Does it mean that there could be a fundamental, at least the beginnings, of a fundamental shift as to how parks and rec is funded and, and making it a little more comparable to how pretty much everybody else funds parks right. and rec around the state? Um, I think Berkeley County right now does a fairly good job, and the savior has been the hotel motel tax. That's truly been mm-hmm. the savior for parks and rec here. Since that existence over 40 years ago, Parks and Rec has gotten 50% of that tax. That's the discretionary part. They mm-hmm. don't have to get it. Uh, the only people that get it uh, by law is the CVB, the 50%. So, uh, and that has been. Now, there were times when the hotel tax dropped during back in the 08 recession, five years in a row, and we didn't get the money replaced. But right now, it's, it's doing this again. So as long as they're getting that. But I think they're down the road, there has to be something other than that. So when it starts dropping again, then you know they can recover the loss we can't build new parks in the county without having the maintenance and park system be able to maintain the property sure that's the worst thing you can do is an indoor pool anywhere in the long range plans that was one of the first questions we got for bob yesterday yeah and what was his answer i don't think there is right now yeah (laughs) well and i've gotten several calls of that since i've been back on uh, just on the council Uh, i would hope so at some point we certainly, uh, it's a great quality of life thing that would affect particularly the seniors, but the whole community would benefit. Uh, I think it has to be something done by, I've always said through the, the hospital, because they're the people that have the largest budget in the county and can sustain the operation of it. So that's important. And when I was there, I was trying to get the city, county, school board, and the hospital to work together. Uh, I know when Tony Zelink was there, their CEO, he had a strong interest in it. I'm not, he's gone now, and I don't think the interest is as great as it was. So, uh, but it, certainly we can uh, look at that again and hopefully uh, find the monies to uh, maybe pursue that at some. What point. was the year we ran the bond, Steve? Oh, and it came. It yeah. was it needed a sixty yeah. percent, and it was like fifty six, something yeah. like that. We did it three times in the night. Uh, Maria, excess levy. We right. Used the excess right, levy. right. 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 And the excess levy because. A bond levy has to be used for bricks and mortar. The excess levy can be used for, for salaries right. as well as bricks and mortar. So then, obviously, you can't build and then not have the staff to take care of it. Uh, the last year we did it was 98, and we 98. got 56% of the vote. Now, is the community ready for that again? Certainly, that's something to consider is put it back on the ballot and mm-hmm. see if they are. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's probably what it's going to take. At some point, uh, the community is going to have to invest in it if we're going to make it grow to the level that most people would like to see it be. So. You made a very telling point earlier, Steve. Uh, you, the county's got to learn to live without their ARPA funding. Right. And we, that It's true. I mean, not only every, Berkeley County, but every, every county. county and every municipality exactly. in the country That's has right. been spoiled exactly. by yep. it. Yeah. And um, it's going to be a great challenge. And um, mm-hmm. But, you know, at the same time, hopefully we can find some sources of revenue to the 1% sales tax to me. I have never heard anybody complain in Martinsburg about the 1% sales tax, since it, and they've had it for how many years? And look what it's done for the city. And if we had that, the thing that's nice about it is it doesn't go back on the property owners. All right, The people that have money are going to spend more, so they're going to pay more on it. Okay, there's no, there, there's, no, there's no 1% on the food tax. There's no food tax, so it doesn't hurt that. But the other thing about the 1% is it's solid because as the community and the population grows, then that tax is going to increase too because it's going to be more spending. Mm-hmm. So there's your money to continue to add more deputies, more firefighters, and all this. And it, it, to me, it's it's a no-brainer. I use that term but, too often, but, it's, but Charleston's got to... But the legislators have not demonstrated okay. they're prepared to give, that, give That's up exactly that That's exactly right. Yeah. And now, in saying that, in fairness to them, uh, I heard Eric Householder say on your show a week ago, Rob, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, of course, the, whether they do the personal income tax, whatever, down the road, they may need the sales tax to offset the loss because we're talking what a 1.6 billion dollar loss out of the state budget if they do this 50 percent reduction so there's a lot of money and uh 
But but other than that, uh, I just think it's it would, I, I just don't understand how some cities can do it and the rest of us can't. Mm-hmm. You know? And I just I, I wish they would consider that. It, it would be our savior. It would solve everything in our community, funding wise, except for the road problem. Yeah, and don't hold your question because we're out of time. We're out of time. <laughs> we're out of time. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Time. I'm sorry, Steve. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having me, County Councilman Steve Cat.